Hello, in this third chapter of the Contemporary Architecture course, I would like to tell you more about the work of three architects, Rem Kolhas, Peter Eisman and Bernard Schumi. Rem Kolhas is a Dutch architect based in uh, Rotterdam. Bernard Schumi is born in uh, France, he's Swiss and his office is in New York. And Peter Eisman is based here, American, based here in New York City. There is something in common between these three architects, and that is the fact that they are both involved in, in practice and in uh, teaching and research. For example, Rem Kohlhaas is a very uh, successful international architect with many offices in Rotterdam, um, New York, Beijing, Hong Kong, and he's also involved in teaching. Currently, he's a professor in practice at the Harvard Graduate School of Design. Bernard Schumi is um, based in the city here in New York, in fact, uh, near the Chelsea Piers where I'm currently standing. And he's a professor at Columbia University where he was dean for many years. Peter Eisman is among the first architects to ever complete a PhD and he studied in Oxford in England and he's currently a professor at Yale University. The three of them are very successful and have made an immense contribution to our profession. Um, I would like to show you a few of their projects just to give you a better idea of what they are uh, designing and how their theories and ideas reflect into their work. We will see from Rem Kolhas a project in uh, Rotterdam, that is the Konshal. We will see from uh, Bernard Schumi a project in, here in New York City, that's the Learner Hall at Columbia University. And by Peter Eisman, we'll see the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin. The three architects have so far built uh, a lot, published and uh, told and spoken about architecture. We uh, can uh, start with Rem Kulhas and say a few words about his work. Rem Kulhas studied at the AA or the Architecture Association in London. Then he moved to the United States where he uh, completed research and a book called Delirious New York on uh, Manhattan. In fact, the subtitle of the book is Retroactive Manifesto of Manhattan. The book speaks about the city. It has two main characters, Salvador Dali and Le Corbusier. He analyzes the city and tries to imagine what it would be to have a manifesto for Manhattan. When Manhattan was designed and built, there was no particular idea, there was no particular concept. The concept was formalized later as it was uh, developed. The book uh, speaks about some of the uh, landmarks of the city as, for example, the sports club in uh, downtown, downtown Manhattan, which is now closed, or the Empire State Building, the uh, Chrysler Building, or also the Rockefeller Center. He uses the buildings as characters and his uh, uh, particular paranoid method to understand and imagine uh, the city, what it was, what it is, and what it could be. Uh, Bernard Schumi, on the, the other side, became known for his um, event cities or planning events or considering architecture and different forms of making architecture. He won a very important competition for the Parc La Villette in uh, Paris, uh, among many other architects participating in it, and built this uh, remarkable project. The project was designed with a grid, uh, him and Peter Eisman worked with this idea of the grid and also the philosopher Jacques Derrida had a certain involvement in this project with, with Peter Eisman. The winner, however, was finally Bernard Schumi. The project was designed with a grid and in every single point of the grid there is one red building which he called La Fo Le Folie. Folie means uh, a small building in a park but it also means a uh, little madness. So in a way, every one, single one of these buildings is certain interpretation of an idea and certain interpretation of a character of a, or of a topic. So we see how a concept can influence 
a project and an idea can be translated into the design of a park, of a city, or of a building. Peter Eismann, on the other side, started uh, his designs as theoretical projects. One of his early projects when he experimented with the grids was the uh, Canareggio project or uh, for another example is the extension of uh, the Venice Hospital in Venice where he uh, designed uh, on the site where Le Corbusier designed a, a hospital. It was never completed but Peter Eisman took the grid and extended it into the city. In every point of intersection of this grid he positioned one small building which was designed according to certain rules. He um, was very much interested in the idea of form, uh, form into architecture. In fact, his uh, doctoral dissertation is called Formal Basis in Modern Architecture. He later uh, designed numerous projects and uh, currently completed the Santiago Compostela City of Culture or, uh, for example, the Berlin Holocaust Memorial, which we will see later in this uh, chapter. The three architects have something in common and it is this relationship between the idea, the concept and the architecture as a project, as a product of these concepts. We will see in each one of the projects that uh, they design how a specific concept is translated and how it's applied into a building. I would like to read you now a quote by the Russian theorist Viktor Sklovsky which would help us understand this methodology of art, of idea, of a concept in relationship to a built project. He speaks about art, but his ideas of art can be translated into architecture. Shklovsky says, the purpose of art is to impart the sensation of things as they are perceived and not as they are known. The technique of art is to make objects unfamiliar, to make forms difficult, to increase the difficulty and length of perception because the process of perception is an aesthetic and in itself and must be prolonged. Art is a way of experiencing the artfulness of an object. The object is not important. This idea of Shklovsky could be directly applied into architecture. So we see a certain uh, idea of a separation between what is a concept and what is a built form. Shklovsky called it estrangement. We will use this method of estrangement as a way to analyze the architecture of these three architects. We will see how an idea can provoke different sensation, can inspire us to look at a building or to a place and, and analyze it further. I, will, I invite you to look at the three projects which I will explain and to see the relation between the concepts that they inspire them and the final project and the built form into architecture.